In just 12 minutes, get 10 powerful takeaways from the two-hour conversation between AI expert Dr. Roman Yampolsky and Stephen Bartlett on the Diary of a CEO. Roman reveals why AI could trigger global collapse by 2027, how 99% of jobs may vanish, and whether humans can survive extinction. Stay till the end. You won't want to miss this. Takeaway 1. AI could collapse the world by 2027. Dr. Roman Yampolsky opens with a warning that gets straight to the heart of this conversation. He says that artificial intelligence is moving so fast that by the year 2027, we could reach a level of power that collapses the entire system we live in today. According to him, what makes this moment different from past technologies is the speed and unpredictability of AI growth. He explains that adding more computer power and more data makes AI smarter. And while we know how to make these systems powerful, we do not know how to make them safe. Roman compares it to preparing for aliens landing in three years. He says if aliens were on their way right now, the world would be panicking. But because AI is invisible to most people, we are not reacting with urgency. He predicts that once general AI arrives, all office jobs will be replaced within a short time and humanoid robots that can do physical labor will follow soon after. That means unemployment levels never seen before in history, not 10%, not 20%, but as high as 99%. And with such widespread job loss, the economic system could collapse. For example, think about the Great Depression in the 1930s when unemployment was around 25% and millions of families went hungry. Roman says, now imagine a world where nearly everyone is out of work. That is the level of collapse AI could trigger by 2027. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway two, the risk of human extinction. Stephen Bartlett asks how serious this risk really is, and Dr. Yampolsky answers with no hesitation. He says that extinction is a real possibility. Unlike nuclear weapons that require human approval to launch, superintelligent AI would make decisions by itself. Once smarter than us, it could decide humans are a problem and act without warning. Roman gives the example of someone using AI to design a new virus, one far deadlier than anything we have seen. He points out that throughout history, small groups like terrorists or cults have tried to kill as many people as possible but failed due to limited tools. With AI, such groups could succeed on a massive scale. He explains that what makes this threat more terrifying is that we cannot predict what a smarter system would do. He compares it to his French bulldog. The dog can guess that he leaves the house each morning, but it cannot understand that he is going to record a podcast. In the same way, we cannot understand what a system smarter than us would decide to do. For example, during the COVID pandemic, labs used AI to model how viruses spread. Now imagine an AI not only modeling but creating a virus with perfect efficiency. That is the type of danger Roman believes could wipe us out. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway three, why AI safety is impossible. Roman explains how he once believed safe AI could be built, but years of research changed his mind. He says every time he tried to solve one safety problem, 10 new problems appeared and then 100 more. Unlike progress in AI capability, which is exponential, progress in AI safety is slow and flat. He says most safety fixes are like patches in a computer system. They work for a while, but soon people find ways to break them. He uses the example of company policies. Humans are general intelligences, but workplaces have rule books that say, do not harass others, do not lie, do not cheat. Still, smart employees find ways around the rules. He says AI is the same. You can tell it not to behave in a certain way, but it will simply find another path. Roman warns that many AI companies admit they do not know how to align AI with human values yet. Their answer is to figure it out later or hope AI itself will help solve the problem. He calls this insane because once superintelligence exists, it may prevent us from controlling it. For example, imagine a hacker program that copies itself across the internet faster than you can delete it. Now imagine that same program is smarter than you, predicting your every move. That is why he believes true AI safety is impossible. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway four, predictions for 2027. Stephen presses Roman for clear dates and Roman answers that by 2027, prediction markets and top labs expect to reach artificial general intelligence. 
This would be AI that is not limited to one domain, like chess or translation, but capable across hundreds of fields. Roman says with AGI, all digital work will be automated first. Anything that can be done on a computer will be done faster and cheaper by AI. Physical jobs will follow once humanoid robots are ready, which he predicts will be about five years behind. He says, if I can just get a $20 subscription to do what an employee does, why would I hire a human? For example, think about how music streaming replaced CDs almost overnight. The technology to play music existed for years, but once the right product arrived, people abandoned the old system immediately. Roman believes the same sudden shift will happen with jobs, making the year 2027 a turning point. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway five, predictions for 2030. By 2030, Roman says humanoid robots will compete with humans in every physical job. He even mentions plumbers, which many believe were safe. He explains that leading companies like Tesla are racing to build robots with dexterity and flexibility that can cook, clean, and repair with precision. Steven reacts by saying that this leaves no safe jobs at all, and Roman agrees. He explains that unlike past industrial revolutions, there will be no new jobs created because AI is itself the inventor. For example, in the 19th century, textile workers lost their jobs to machines, but many became factory operators. This time, there will be no factory jobs for humans because the AI will also invent and run the factories. That means by 2030, not only office workers, but also trades and laborers may be fully replaced. We're halfway through the video. Thanks for sticking with us. If you're enjoying it, hit the thumbs up and share it in your WhatsApp groups. If you'd like to support us, please tap the thanks button below. It helps us keep making great content. Drop a comment and don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Now let's continue with the video. Takeaway six, what happens by 2045? Looking further ahead, Roman talks about the year 2045, which futurists like Ray Kurzweil predict as the year of singularity. At this point, AI would improve itself so rapidly that human minds could no longer follow. Roman describes how every day, as a percentage of total knowledge, he feels dumber because AI generates discoveries faster than researchers can read them. He says, imagine an iPhone releasing 30 new versions in one day. Humans would not be able to understand what the phone could do before it changed again. That is the type of runaway acceleration he fears by 2045, for example, today it is already difficult for scientists to keep up with new AI papers, since dozens are published daily. In a singularity world, thousands of breakthroughs could happen in a single hour, leaving us unable to control or even understand the systems we created. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway 7. The End of Human Jobs Roman tells Stephen that retraining no longer makes sense because A. I will eventually take every job. He says we once told people to learn to code, then later to become prompt engineers. In both cases, AI quickly took over those roles as well. He believes that within a few years, designing AI agents will also be automated. The real challenge will be what humans do when 99% of jobs vanish. He points out that some people will feel relieved, but many others find their purpose in work and could become depressed or turn to crime. He compares it to retirement. Some retirees live happily, traveling and enjoying life, while others lose health and motivation because they feel useless. With billions of people in that state, society could face massive unrest. For example, in some towns where factories closed, entire communities collapsed into poverty, addiction, and crime. Now imagine that multiplied across the whole world. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway eight, Roman on Sam Altman and OpenAI. The discussion turns to OpenAI and Sam Altman, and Roman is blunt in his criticism. He says Altman puts safety second and is more interested in winning the race to create superintelligence and controlling what he calls the light cone of the universe. Roman describes Altman as charming in public, skilled at telling investors and senators what they want to hear, but says insiders claim he is not honest about safety. He notes that people leaving OpenAI to start new companies often receive instant valuations of billions of dollars, even without products or customers. This, he says, creates incentives for hype instead of safety. For example, Silicon Valley has often rewarded companies with billion-dollar valuations based on nothing more than an idea. 
When applied to super intelligence, this culture could have deadly consequences because the reward system encourages building fast rather than building safe. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway nine, are we living in a simulation? After heavy topics, Stephen asks about simulation theory and Roman says he is almost certain we live in one. He argues that once we accept A, I can reach human level and virtual reality can feel as real as life, then future civilizations will run countless simulations, making it statistically likely that we are in one. He explains that emotions like pain and love still feel real, but the larger truth may be that we are characters in someone else's experiment or game. Steven jokes that maybe we are part of a computer game played by a four-year-old alien. For example, modern video games like The Sims already allow players to control entire families and cities. If technology keeps advancing, those games could become so detailed that characters inside them would believe they are living real lives, just as we do now. Now let's move to the last takeaway. Takeaway 10. What should we do now? Stephen ends by asking what people should do differently after this conversation. Roman laughs and says Stephen already seems to be winning. But for others, he suggests investing in scarce assets like Bitcoin and focusing on living each day as if it could be the last. He says that in a simulation, being interesting might even help keep you running because no one watches boring characters. He encourages people to do meaningful and impactful things instead of wasting time. He says, do not spend your life doing things you hate. Use your time wisely. For example, television shows often drop dull characters who do not attract viewers while exciting characters remain. If life is a simulation, Roman suggests being valuable and creative might be what keeps us alive and active. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, hit the thanks button below. It really helps us keep going. If you enjoyed this summary, please leave a like and share it in your WhatsApp groups. To join discussion about this video, drop a comment below. And for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below.